Today we're gonna to tell you all about how to build your very own street legal Miata cart from beginning to end in eight steps. Seems like lately Miata carts have been very popular on the internet. These kind of vehicles have different names like the Death Cart, the Exocet, Exo Cart. People build them out of all kinds of cars. And we're gonna share our experience with you today. Now the first step is to locate a vehicle. We found on Facebook Marketplace a wrecked Miata that was $200. Miatas are relatively inexpensive, they're light, they're simple and they are that classic two-seater roadster type sports car. But really, you can build them out of anything you want. Any two-door rear-wheel drive domestic or Japanese car will make a good car for this. We've even seen them built out of other cars like a, a front-wheel drive car like an Integra. I've seen them made out of four doors, but the proportions get a little bit off but then you also have the added benefit of being able to take four people with you instead of two. But whatever you do, I do recommend starting with something that runs and drives. Uh, if, if you're gonna go to all this work into building a car like this, especially for the first time, you don't wanna lose motivation because you have to fix a car that doesn't run. So I'd love to hear what you think about that in the comments. Let me know, do you think the Miata's the best platform for this or is it something else? What kind of car would you cut up to build your own car? Next is step two, but before we get to that, I just wanted to thank you again for watching this video. I would love it if you would subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when we put a new video up. As a thank you, we would like to give you a free sticker. So if you subscribe, you hit that bell, there's a link down in the description where you can get a free sticker, totally free, free shipping. We will send you a black flag sticker that you can put on whatever you want. So step two is to plan your build. Now the first question you wanna ask is, are you actually gonna build a street legal cart? If you're just gonna rip this around off road in your backyard and never take it on the street, uh, then you're gonna make different decisions. A lot of the stuff that I'm gonna tell you isn't gonna matter. But if you are gonna build one of these street legal Miata carts, death carts, what you're gonna wanna do is check into your state's regulations, even your city's regulations. So there are some states like Illinois or Florida where there's no inspections, there's no emissions inspections, no safety inspections. You could probably get away with a little bit more in those states than you could in a state where you have to have your car safety inspected. There are even some states like I believe Virginia where your car has to have a hood. Some states they want you to have fenders or mud flaps, but regardless of your state's laws, you should be able to build one of these that will pass a safety and an emissions inspection in your own state. Now, after you answer that question, the next question is, are you gonna race this? Is it gonna end up on a track somewhere? And if it is, you need to get a hold of the rule book for whatever events you wanna take it to, whether it's an autocross, drag race, whatever it is, make sure that what you're building will pass tech for wherever you're going. Now, when we built ours, I know it's a Miata, this may not make the most sense, but I'm most familiar with drag racing, so I looked at the NHRA rules for cages, mainly because they're fairly simple and you can build an easy four, five, or six point roll bar or roll cage fairly easily by following their rules. If you're never gonna go to a drag strip or if you're never gonna go to track, you can just, you can build whatever it is you want. The next place I looked after that was, believe it or not, the 24 Hours of Lemons website. So if you're not familiar with 24 Hours of Lemons, it is a endurance race of $500 cars. After you find your $500 car, you have to build a cage that's safe and they give instructions, they have a document that gives you recommendations on how to build a safe and legal cage for their races. Now, these instructions are easy to understand and it will give you a good guideline for how to build something that's actually safe for your car. Now, a third resource that I found was there's a guy that actually wrote a dissertation that had to do with engineering on building a cage for a Miata and it was even way too detailed for me, but it exists and I will put a link in the description where you can find all of those things. Really the most important thing to us was building something that was safe. I didn't want to get in a wreck and be injured or kill someone because that's actually happened when people have built these things. Now the third stage of our planning was how we actually wanted this cart to look. I've seen a lot of these builds where they were 100% function. There's nothing wrong with that if that's the way you want to build. But I didn't necessarily love the way they look. So I did a lot of research. I gathered as many pictures of these types of cars that I could find. 
I decided what I liked and what I didn't like. And then I took pictures, renderings, and drawings of actual Miatas, and then I just started drawing on them with pen and paper or throwing them in Photoshop or whatever and just putting some straight lines so I could get an idea of the angles and the proportions and how I wanted this to look. Now there is another option besides building your own cage. You could buy your own cage. They make cages for Miatas. They are one of the most popular and most raced vehicles of all time. If you're not a big welder or fabricator, you can always go the prefabricated cage route. So the third step is gathering your tools and materials. If you're wanting to build one of these carts, I'm assuming you have some basic mechanical ability. You've got some basic tools in your garage, the kind of stuff that you would use to do oil change, basic maintenance on a car, maybe fix a bike, those types of things. Honestly, you don't need too much more than that. So the bare minimum that you're gonna need to build this, besides your basic hand tools, is Sawzall and lots and lots of metal blades, and then an angle grinder. Those two things will do most of the cutting, most of the fabrication. Now, when I built mine, I just had a cheap $100 welder that I bought on Craigslist and used this to build basically the entire car. Now the next thing you're gonna need is a tubing bender. And I know what you're wondering, can I just get the cheap pipe bender from Harbor Freight? And the answer is no. That cheap pipe bender will kink the pipe and your pipes won't pass tech, it won't be safe. And they're not actually made to bend the type of tubing that is used to build a roll cage. So what you need is a tubing bender that is made specifically to bend the kind of tube that you're gonna use on your cage, which we'll talk about what kind of tube here in a second. What we found was the cheapest way to get into the tubing bender was the Speedway Motors tubing bender. Now this is made by a couple other manufacturers. It's also sold as the affordable tubing bender. But what attracted us to this was that for one, it was available reasonably quickly. It was fairly cheap. You could buy different sized dies for it for different kind of tubing. And the thing that was most appealing was I didn't have to bolt it to the floor like some of the other tubing vendors. It sits on a table, it's portable, and it uses a jack to bend the tube. So I could throw it in the back of the truck, take it anywhere, not have to mount it, and I could get the job done. So far, those are the, those are the things that are 100% necessary to build your cage. But there are a couple things that we got that made the job a little bit easier. So the tubing notcher and the appropriate hole saw bits from Harbor Freight, they weren't very expensive. And then we got lots of kind of little angle finder gauges, those types of tools. And actually the, the angle finders were only a couple bucks and they made the job a lot easier. Apart from that, you're gonna want some Sharpies, some tape, some things that will allow you to measure well, other things like brake clean, stuff like that. So after you have the right tools, you're going to wanna to make sure you have the right materials. Looking at your sanctioning body's specs is going to be most important because they will determine the size of tube that's required and the material that's required for your tube. Off the top of my head, if you are building a four point roll bar, the NHRA rules that we read required that you used one and seven eighths inch mild steel tubing. And it required a certain thickness of that tubing as well. So we bought the die for that size tubing. Now, according to those rules, a full cage, which we ended up building, the requirement is smaller diameter of tubing or if you were going to use chromoly, which is lighter, it's a different size tubing with a different thickness as well. But chromoly would require TIG welding, which would be a more expensive welder, a different process, all stuff that we didn't have yet. Now, once you get the correct size tubing, you are going to need some eighth inch steel plate. To mount your cage's bars, most of those rules require a six by six plate welded to the unibody structure, or if you have a car that actually has a frame, you wanna weld the cage directly to the frame. So reference your rules to know what to do there, but the, it's just important to know. The other thing that's very important to know before you start building, most sanctioning bodies don't allow you to grind on the welds on your cage. So you're gonna to wanna to practice, make sure that your welding is up to snuff before you start welding. If you're doubting your abilities, you could just tack all the bars, not finish weld them, and then take them to somebody who knows what they're doing. That's a totally viable option. So those are the tools and materials. And if you want any information on the types of tools that we use, we will also provide links to that in the description. Now step four is when you start cutting on the car. And this is the fun part, so get your friends, get some family members, whoever is interested in helping with this process because it's kind of fun. Now what I will say is don't cut too much because you can't get it back. You can always cut more later as you're building, but you can't get the material back. Also make sure that you don't cut anything important like fuel lines, brake lines, wiring, things like that. 
You can always clean up that wiring after the fact, but once you cut through stuff, it, it makes it a little bit harder to fix. Another thing to think about is you could potentially part out things on your car and recoup your money. Now, if you're doing a Miata, there's a couple trouble spots you need to be aware of. So behind the doors and kind of the rear quarter panels, there are multiple layers of steel there. So it, it was a little troublesome to cut through all those layers of steel. It's a lot more than you think is gonna be there. So just know that you're gonna spend some extra time there. Behind the doors, there's a couple small spots where if you cut too much, you're gonna have to weld some extra material in. And we know this because we got a little overzealous and cut a little too much, which required some work to clean up. And the third place not to cut too much is in the back. So once we were done in the very back of the car, we kind of just left this platform as long as we could and waited until we had built the back bars off the main tube to cut it. If you have people helping, make sure that you are communicating well to those people what stays and what goes so that you don't lose something that you thought was important. So if you followed all these steps, hopefully you have a car that's completely stripped, that's basically a platform, a steering wheel, some seats, and this is where you're gonna start building your actual cage. One of the things that we did is we sat everybody on the car that we knew might potentially drive it and made sure that it would fit for the biggest person. And then we got to work. I recommend you start with your main hoop crossbar for the harnesses and then your two back bars that come off the main hoop. That will build you a four point roll bar and if that's as far as you wanna take it, you can only take it that far. But then we took that four point and built upon it. You start with your foundation and you build upon it. There's one good thing to know is not to finish weld until you have the entire cage built because you can always go back and redo something. We did redo some things. We have redone the front end and the rear end multiple times because we didn't like the way that it looked. Now, if you want a couple more tips on how to build a roll cage, we actually have a separate video that we will link in the description that shows you the process for bending bars and tacking and some of the planning, some of the tricks that you can use when you're building your own roll cage. Now, after you've bent all your bars and hopefully welded them up as well, you can start wiring the car. And you can get as detailed or as messy, as simple or as complicated as you want. But we were very excited to drive this car. So what we did is we had some cheap headlights that we got off Amazon. And for us, it was simple as just plugging in the blades from the existing harness into those lights, taping them out of the way, and we took off and started driving the thing. Now, I don't recommend that you do that. It is the quickest, dirtiest, maybe the unsafest way to do it. If you wanted to get really fancy, you could drill holes, tuck all the wires, and make it look very neat. Now, after you've done the wiring, you're gonna to wanna to finish the car, sand, paint, make it look the way you want, which is also something that we skip because we just love driving the thing so much. Uh, ours has never been painted, it's rusty, it doesn't even look good anymore, but make it your own. The eighth and final step is to just drive it. These things are a blast to drive. At the beginning of the year, we took ours on a nearly thousand mile road trip from Tucson to LA and back which you can also see in another video that I will link here. And we had so much fun that we actually blew the engine in the thing. Now, a couple things we learned from this process of just driving it around. For one, wear sunscreen because it gets hot and you're gonna get a sunburn. For two, be prepared for attention and for people to film you as they're driving. We had one guy that filmed us for maybe five miles. I, I was actually a little scared that he was gonna run into some people. And the next thing is be prepared to get pulled over. Now, I got pulled over one time once the police officer realized this was a legit vehicle with a title and license and a real VIN number, he was like, I'm sorry, I made a mistake and let us go without even seeing our driver's licenses. So just make sure you have the proper documentation. Hopefully you've left the VIN numbers in the proper places when you built the car. Make sure that you follow all those rules and regulations so that you are within your legal rights as you're driving this on the street. So those are the eight steps of building your own Miata cart or vet cart or whatever kind of cart you wanna build. Now, if there's a question we didn't answer, let me know in the comments below. We will answer as many questions as we can about the process of building a Miata cart. And if you've built your own, I would love to see it as well. Got a stick of sticky liquidy substance everywhere. I wish I knew where the flashers were on this. <laughs> it's probably a button that doesn't exist anymore. We were almost there, but something blew. 